Praise the Lord. Hallelujah be to God. Well, I trust you've had um, a good weekend and uh, you're ready for another beautiful week in living in Christ and Christ living in you. Anyway, I've got a message tonight and uh, I called it Fake It Till You Make It. You most probably have heard that statement. I know I've heard it many times. Um, so I want to talk about that um, because actually scientifically, um, if you if you look it up, you'll see that um, in science they say it actually does work. Um, it's a, actually they promote it in a sense. They don't want you to lose your true self. They want you to be real, but they still think that faking it till you make it, eventually you become cognizant of what you're saying, uh, even though you don't believe it, you're faking it. It's not real. But eventually, uh, sort of cognitively, you sort of agree to it and uh, uh, results come. I suppose they, when people say you've got to believe in yourself, same type of thing. Um, but this is all worldly teaching. It's uh, not for the new creation. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your mercies, your grace, your goodness. And I thank you, Lord God, tonight that um, as we hear the word, faith will come in our hearts and an increase will come in our character of Christ in us. Uh, and I thank you, Lord, for the anointing of our ears and our eyes, that we might see and know the truth, that we might hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. And we give you praise and glory. Amen. Well, you want the real, I'm sure. I want the real. But science says that if you fake it long enough, it actually makes a difference in your behavior, your life. Well, the world's teaching is all about behavior. It's all about you becoming a better person within yourself. But that's not for us in the new creation. Um, now, fake it until you make it. I first heard that actually in, in church. When I was um, first born of God, I was um, sort of within a few months, I was in a word of faith church. And in the word of faith church, it's the first time I heard fake it till you make it. Now, I'm not coming against the word of faith movement in particular. Uh, they're not the only people have said it. And um, I learned a lot in the Word of Faith. The Word of Faith movement was pretty good to me. I believed it, and I spoke it, confessed it, did all the things that I was taught to do, and, and I prospered. I learned some good things. But, you know, you don't usually stay in one thing in your Christian walk. You know, things change, you change. Um... God's word getting in you, the spirit of God in you. So I wouldn't say I'm the word of faith preacher now or minister, although I know what they teach. And like I say, some beautiful people in there, some lovely people. Uh, they, they are hungry for the word of God. But it's sort of moved on. And it's that, that movement is not so much there anymore. You know, Kenneth Hagin was really the prophet of that movement. Um, and he died. And I think that was... Well, it sort of slowed down after that. So I'm not coming against the word of faith, the movement. I'm, I'm just saying that fake it till you make it is not for the new creation. That is, that's all. It's not for the new creation. Now, you've heard the word fake a lot lately, especially if you listen to the news. And, um, you know, the President Donald Trump, I mean, he's always making sure everyone knows that the fake news is watching. And they're not recording uh, what he feels they should be recording or showing the, the, the people, the nations, the world. And so he calls these channels fake news. Most, most of them, except maybe for Fox, Fox News. He likes Fox News. And uh, I watch Fox News. And I'm very careful what news channels I do watch. But fake news is everywhere, folks, everywhere. 
And of course, the battle is a media battle, really, for our minds. You know, there's those people out there who have lots of money, lots of power, a lot of influence, and they have the airwaves. And they actually make sure that their agenda is coming across. And uh, it's slanted. So sometimes it's best to go online, as we do, and find other news channels that maybe are not mainstream, but they do have information and give you the true news, the real news. But you've got to discern it yourself. You've got to chew it up and look at it and research it. But do we have that time to do all that? I mean, there's so much news coming anyway. But anyway, fake news. A lot of fake things out of there. A lot of counterfeit. Um, fake handbags. Fake everything. Everything's faked. Everything is copied. But the fake gospel? Mm, now we're touching something. Fake news? We understand that. But the fake gospel? Can the gospel be fake? Well, yeah, it can. That's why you have to discern that which is good and that which is evil. Have your senses, senses, your spiritual senses exercised to discern that which is good and that which is evil. You've got to chew it over. Well, anyway, hopefully we'll bring forth the, uh, the true gospel tonight and every time I'm on. Uh, I do have the fear of the Lord and um, I wouldn't want to be someone that is bringing gospel truth and it's slanted with behavior modification. It's tainted. Behavior modification is not what we're all about. We're about a new creation. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And uh, a new creation has a, a new covenant. And a new Jerusalem. Everything's new. And with the new covenant, God said that he'll put the law in our minds and in our, invite him in our hearts. So the law has waxed old in a sense under the old covenant, but it's still new in us because it's now in us, not outside of us. Well, that's a real privilege, isn't it? To know that he's written the law on my heart and put it in my mind. So there's really no excuse, is there, for being stupid? To be saved by grace through faith, not of works, it's a gift of God, and then go about sinning as if grace would uh, cover you. Well, that's stupidity. No, God wants us to live a holy life, a good life. Uh, we, we know his laws, they're very simple. And in fact, in the New Covenant, they're even reduced the laws of God, not many to really be concerned about. I mean, you know, if you, if Jesus said, a, a, a new law I give unto you, that you love one another, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. That all people might know that you're my disciples, if you ever loved one for another. So the, the love of God, the true love of God in us, is the Christ in us, loving through us, is the fulfillment of the law encompasses everything if you're if you're loving people you're not stealing from them are you you're not cheating them you're not doing things inconsistent with god's ways and you know it because it's written on your heart you know you're, you you know what is right what is wrong and because i believe you're like me you want to please god so without faith, it's impossible to please God. So our faith is focused on who he is and who Christ is in us. Well, with the fake gospel, it's more about how you get your stuff, you know, how you get your things. And if you change your behavior uh, and you can um, be more pleasing to people, you can win friends and influence you know, people because you are behaving the way that the world's teachers teach you. And unfortunately, yes, it's in the church. And the church teaches um, the disciples, the Christians, 
to do fake stuff. When they got the real, you wouldn't want the fake if you got the real. So there's the fake news, f fake gospel, but there's the true good news and the true gospel. And that's what we're in, involved in. I'm sure you would agree on that. Well, the real was made possible at a place called Calvary. It's called the place of the skull. Uh, that's God's oh, stock exchange. That's where it's located at Calvary, the place of the skull. That's where it is. And, and that's where the righteous one, Jesus Christ, was made the sinner man. So he was made sin. We're at Calvary, the place of the skull. And um, because he was made sin, we can receive that by grace imputed to us. And we can say by his act of sacrifice, becoming that sacrificial lamb, we are set free. We're free. We're free. So the righteousness I have is not of me, but of who he is in me. Because the promise of the Father was that we would receive this, the Spirit of God, the power of God. It came at Calvary. I mean, it came at um, Book of Acts, Acts 2. Spirit fell and it came on their heads. The flame, the fire came on their heads. God was accepting their praise. Uh, by that fire on their heads, it means I'm accepting what you're thinking, what you're saying. And that's where God has placed his name. The book of Revelation said God has placed his name now on our foreheads. Our foreheads. Uh, because we are the temple of God. So this is, here is the upper room. This is where God is. This is where he uh, is to be worshipped in our thought life. Our thinking, praising, worshiping the Spirit and in truth. When you think about the, uh, the place of the skull, you think about the skull. Right here, this is called the temple. Right here, the temple here. It's a vital spot right here. You can kill somebody by smacking him in the temple. And, you know, very dangerous to be hit here. But that, that's, that's, that's the temple. Why is it called the temple? Well, God lives in his temple. He lives in, your, in, 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 in you. And when you're cognizant, conscious of that, that Christ in you, the hope of glory, that, 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 that brings a result. So God's not fooling around. You know, he's not living in temples made with hands anymore. He knows what he wants. He wants you. He wants me. He wants all of his children to come into freedom and liberty in the new covenant, with the new covenant. The only time you can be truly free is if you have um, your mind conscious of the new Jerusalem and your mother is Sarah, not Hagar. So when you recognize there's two covenants and these two covenants are significant and Paul explains that Sarah represented one and Hagar represented the other. And if you're in Hagar, then you're in bondage, you're slaves. But if you're in Sarah, you're free men. That's another sermon, really, when you think about it. But it's nice to know that freedom is when you are very conscious of the fact that you're in the new covenant and that Sarah is your mother and the new Jerusalem mother is Sarah. So if we focus on these things, looking not at the things which are seen, that's the Jerusalem that now is, which is in bondage with its children, Looking not at things that are seen, but things that are not seen. New Jerusalem, eternal in the heavens. Looking not at things which are seen. So how can you do that? Well, you've got to do it through your spiritual eyes. The eyes of your understanding have to be in 
enlightened. Looking at things not seen, not seen. Can't see them. It's invisible, but it's real. It's true. The true gospel. Freedom's a wonderful thing. You know, Jesus Christ gave his life that we might be free. But if we go back under the law, that brings us into bondage again, the slavery. So that's why we have to be uh, very cognizant of the fact that there's the Judaizers walking around trying to get you back into the old. Just like they did in, in the days of Paul the Apostle. Wherever he went, the Judaizers followed. And as he was teaching the saints about the new creation, the new Jerusalem, the new covenant, looking not at the things which are seen, but the things that are not seen, the Judaizers would turn up and say, nah, nah, don't listen to him, he's a heretic. You've got to come back to the old Jerusalem. Come on, come back to the temple worship. That's where you belong. And, and keep all the laws of the temple and Moses, the old covenant, you see. That's the, that's the, the Judaizers. They, 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 they believe in Jesus, but they believe also in the temple and the ways of the temple, that system, the old covenant system under Moses. They believed in Moses' law. See? But um, Paul said we're transitioning out of that. He had a terrible time, these Judaizers. They were just hassling wherever he went. But he was trying to get the truth over to the, to the people, especially in the Galatians. He really let them have it through wonderful teachings, beautiful teachings. So you say by grace, not by law, not by works, but by faith and grace. And if you started that way, you've got to continue that way. But the Judaizers say, no, no, you've got to come back. Come, come back to the old, the old covenant. Come back to the temple ways that we do it there and the, the feasts that we keep and, and keep and we keep them this is how we keep them you got to learn how to keep them and paul was saying no 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 you don't need to keep all those things they're done away with you in christ jesus it's waxed old and god now has got a new covenant he's going to write it on your heart and put it in your mind the laws of god and then paul eventually with the other apostles came to the conclusion that these Judaizers need to, you know, stop messing about with the new converts. So they said, listen, we can't put any of the old ways of the temple worship under Moses on the new disciples. They're, they're coming to know Jesus Christ as their savior. So they decided we're going to get together and just tell them these few things. It's just simple as it is. Tell them not to uh, fornicate. Uh, stay away from idols. Don't drink blood of any sort of animals. That's pretty simple, isn't it? That, that's it. That's it. And he said, and all these other things, the, 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 the Sabbaths, the feasts, the holy days, he said, that's, that's not for them at all. They're not getting involved. Circumcision, they need to be circumcised. Because God's dealing with the heart. It's circumcision of the heart. It's not in the flesh. See, uh, behavior modification is works of the flesh, the fleshly mind, the carnal mind. And it listens to these type of teachings that come to us from these type of great speakers and motivators. I won't name them, but you know a whole bunch of them. They're, they're really good. They tell you how you can become a better person. But the gospel, true gospel, doesn't tell you how to become a better person. It tells you how to go to the cross at Calvary, the place of the skull, and die, get crucified. She said, follow me. Follow me to where? To the place of the skull. And, and you, uh, you, you die there. The cross. The cross is meant to... Kill you stone dead. Kill who? The old man. The Adamic nature. The first Adam. So now you can say, you are dead, or I am dead. My life is hid in Christ in God. I'm a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Let me read you something here. 
this is good. This is Galatians 2. Galatians is a great book. I can't, I'm reading it right now again. I just love it. It talks about being justified by faith. Paul said this, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus Christ, that we might be justified by the faith of Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. See, the works of the law, you can't be justified by, by keeping laws under Moses. You can't. And anything to do with behavior modification is, is, is not the laws of God or the ways of God. But if, while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves also are found sinners. Is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. It's my fault. For I, through the law, am dead to the law. Paul's saying you're dead to the law. You're dead. Once, you, once you died, the law has no jurisdiction over you. But if you're still alive in Adam, the law is always out to get you, to bring you into a place of condemnation and guilt. Then you have to cry out for a savior. You know, who can deliver me from this body of sin? Oh, thank God for Jesus, Romans 8.1. Thank God for Jesus. If I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor. Transgressor. For I, through the law, am dead to the law, that I might live unto God. I am crucified. Oh, listen to this. Is a, this could be the best scripture in the whole Bible. It really could. I don't say it is, but it really could be. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself to me. I do not frustrate the grace of God. For if righteousness come by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. Do you get that? Christ is dead in vain. Christ's death was not in vain. It was the true way to righteousness. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You know, uh, no man can come to the Father except through Christ, through Jesus Christ. You've got to come to the cross. So the true gospel really talks about the cross of Christ. And you follow me. He said, follow me. Then the old man dies and the new man lives. So therefore, the problem is not necessarily to do with fake gospel versus the true gospel or fake news versus the true good news. It's about union life versus independent life. That's really the crux of the matter. Independent life it means you're still alive in yourself, in the old man or the first Adam. And so independent, you're independent. You are a self-made man, woman. You're independent. You know, it's like when we get our first car, we realize how free we are now. We've got an automobile or self-mobile. You are, you are, you're free to drive where you want to drive, do what you want to do. And you hear that going on a lot. You hear people say that a lot. You know, I, I, it's my life. I want to do what I want to do, and I'm going to do it no matter what. I might hurt a few people along the way, but nevertheless, I'm free. It's my life. I'm going to live it. Actually, it's not your life. You're supposed to lose your life. It's his life. You've been bought with a price. So uh, I would think that one over again. It's not about getting your stuff, living your life apart from him in you. So now it's independent life is now to be exchanged 
the God Stock Exchange, Calvary, for the union life. It's no longer independent self. It's union life. Our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. Jesus said the time will come when you'll know that I'm, I'm in you, you in me, and I'm in the Father. We're, we're, all, we're all in union. But not in the independent self mentality. You got to do it yourself. I mean, you know, God helps those that help themselves. It was not in the Bible, that by the way. You see, you you you're going to have a, a teacher's going to teach you how to fake it till you make it. And you fake it long enough, you'll become it. Well, there are sort of truths there. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying uh, the Bible even says as a man thinketh in his heart so is he but it's talking to the Christ mind now see the the Christ mind the mind that recognizes that it is in union with Jesus Christ Christ in me the hope of glory I can see Christ in you see Christ in me we're in union we're in fellowship now that mind is the renewed mind and that mind can say things like of myself, I can do nothing. But through Christ, I can do all things. See, when you fake it, it's not true. It's, it's not honest. You're faking it. You might be sincere, but you're sincerely faking it. And you think if you say it long enough, it'll become true. No, no, you don't do it that way. We, we have to come to the cross and then we renew our mind. And then there's a thing called a change of mind must come about. Well, the change of mind, the word actually is repentance. And Jesus said, go and preach the good news to everybody and, 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 and repentance. You've got to repent. Repent of the old way, the old life, the old man. It's a sinner man. But now you're the new man. It's the righteous one in you. It's not what you did, it's what Christ did at Calvary. And then you received it as a gift. And you believed in your heart and confessed with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and his death, burial, resurrection. So the fake gospel basically causes you to be a behavior moderation type person. The books you read are the books of positive thinking, how you can do it, nothing you can't do. There's a scripture that says, when I'm weak, then I'm strong. You see, so I think, wow, I'm weak, I'm, I'm strong. I say I'm strong, I'm weak, but I'm strong. No, read it again. Read it again with a renewed mind. When I'm weak, then I am strong. Who's the I am? Well, it's God. God in you is the I am. It's not that you are now strong. When, you, when you're weak, then God in you Become strong. The I am in you, the Christ in you, becomes strong. That's the truth. That's a wonderful truth. So when you're weak, then you know, because your mind has been renewed and you've repented of the old life. And when you're weak, you then can enter into a restful state and say, when I'm weak, then God in me is strong. I'm not strong, he is strong. I'm not sure he is strong. I'm preaching the truth. This is not fake. I'm weak. That's the reality. The flesh is weak. But when I recognize who is in me, he who is in me is strong. Awesome. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Ooh. But you've got to go to the next verse. For it is God who worketh in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. So you don't have to fake it when you're hearing the true gospel. You don't need to fake it till you make it. The true gospel tells you that of yourself you can't do it anyway. Jesus said of myself I can do nothing. As I hear my father speak, then I do it. He was always waiting to hear from the father. So we're trying to go around with a fake gospel. It's fake. It's not true. Faking it till we make it, putting on a bold front, a bold face, 
Well, I don't want you to go around as a poor little beggar and poor me and a victim mentor. No, but you know the truth. And you can, having done all the stand, you stand. So you won't, you won't be embarrassing, believe me, if you walk by faith in Christ Jesus, in this union life. You just know the truth, that's all. You shall know the truth. The truth shall make you free, free, freedom. And God makes everything beautiful in his time. Just stick around long enough. Just be faithful, sincere. God is working in you character. The character of Christ is forming us to look like his son, Jesus Christ. And it's over many, many years. So we don't have to fake it. You can be honest. I, I, I can't do I'm weak. But I know one thing. God in me is able to do everything and anything. And I'm, if you call out to him, call out to God. He knows you're weak. He knows your situation. Call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things which you do not know. I've been calling on him lately, all the time. I go, my God, my God, my God. See, I know I'm weak. I don't have to fake it till I make it. I know what I am. I know who I am. I'm bought with a price. The old man died, the new man lives. I'm hidden in Christ. There's lots of things in my mind I think about, but my mind, if it's renewed, it's thinking his thoughts, not independent thoughts. If you're thinking your thoughts and the desire from your thoughts come across, that's when the word says you have not because you ask not. And then you ask amiss to heave it upon your own lusts. Because it came from your independent mindset, what you want. Not wanting to know what, what does God want? What does the Father want for me? So I learned to wait on him. Those that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. That strength in you is, is the Christ in you. He is the strong one. And when he begins to move, then you move in him. When he begins to be busy, you become busy. Until that time, don't try to fake it that you're doing something for God and you're doing this, you're doing that. Be real, be real. I mean, you don't have to go around also being, like I say, pitiful and poor me. I'm not talking about that. Oh, praise God. Praise the Lord. So fake it till you make it. Yes, there's a truth there. Science has proven that you can benefit, but it's talking to those that are not yet knowing who they are in Christ. Yes, believe in yourself, they say. What self are they talking about? Your true self is the Christ in you. He doesn't need any help. You believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in you as your life. That's union life, as your life. So you can relax, you can rest. You are going somewhere. It might seem like a long, long journey, but you're going somewhere good, to a good place. Enoch walked with God and was not because God took him, took him to a better place. Anyway, I think my time is up. Hopefully I got through the truth that I wanted to bring through. Fake versus real is not really what we're talking about. We're talking about independent life versus union life. And an intelligent choice you make causes you to be who God wants you to be. In him, immortal, live a long life, get a new body and oh my goodness, there's so many promises that the Father has given us. So you make an intelligent choice and decide that you're not going to follow men. You're going to follow Jesus Christ. And he'll take you to the cross. Calvary. God's stock exchange. That's where you have an exchange of nature and an exchange of mind. God bless you. Appreciate you. 
Tell somebody about this Tuesday night and Thursday night at this time, 7.30 UK time. And um, let them know about it. And subscribe. If you haven't yet subscribed, subscribe to the channel. You see the little button there on the screen. And then click the little bell icon there. You get notification when I'm coming on. And hopefully we can grow this channel. And we can talk about things like spoken about tonight and other things. And about what's going on in the world. My goodness, we've got to know what's happening. We can't see it through horizontal eyes. We've got to have the vertical eyes. See it how God sees it. It's all good. It's all good to the overcomer. It's all good. You see from your own works, you're an overcomer. All good. This earth is being cleaned up. We're going into a thousand years of peace and joy. Wonderful things. But we're going to go through a lot of storms before we get there. But we'll get there by God's grace. Amen. So he's given us his spirit. You're born of his spirit. Your life is hid in Christ in God. You're an overcomer. You cease from your own works. You live by faith and obedience. Anyway, God bless you. Like I say, uh, Hey, but if you wanted to become a patron, there's that um, graphic there. That's patreon.com. And then you can get on board with me to help me with this wonderful opportunity we got here. Help me financially. You don't have to give much, whatever, whatever. A few dollars a month, a few pounds a month, whatever, whatever anything. It all helps. Take a look at it, the Patreon site. Until next time, hopefully in a few days, Thursday night, I'll have another message for you. Until that time, stay free, stay blessed, and stay away from the Judaizers. Run when they come to tell you you've got to do more than what the Bible says or God says. You're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself. It's a gift of God. Just receive it and thank God. And don't get involved in all these other things they want you to get involved in. Taking you back backward step weakens you put you under the law of feasts and sabbaths and holy days and what you can eat what you can't eat all that stuff stay away from it run from the judaizers until next time god bless you <laughs> amen and amen